Good morning. How are you? <gasps> Hello. I'm I'm excellent. It's been a great day, and I've been looking forward to doing this interview with you. So before we get started, I would like to introduce you. So I am with Cindy Whiteside, an award-winning top producer in multiple states who has firsthand knowledge about the complexities of moving. Cindy's family was frequently relocated for 20 years before finally settling in Houston. Because of Cindy's experience, empathy, and expertise, your move will become a smoother process. She understands the need to combine buying and selling expectations with the real estate realities of living in Texas. Cindy listens to her clients first, then works to satisfy their home desires. With her her upbeat and enthusiastic attitude, it makes this often complex process much more enjoyable. Cindy has been featured as a resource realtor for Money Magazine, the Houston Chronicle, and is a frequent resource as a lifestyles expert for the new construction building industry. And Cindy, welcome. (laughs) Thank you, I'm so glad to be here. And I just have to say, I was so thrilled when you helped our family get prepared for our last move. It made all the difference. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, what's great is, so for anyone new to me, I'm Melody Granger, and I work in the professional organizing industry, and I would consider myself like a streamlining specialist. A lot of people call me like, help get rid of stuff or get the house ready to sell or uh, when they're relocating, retiring, uh, lots of changes in life or just maybe updating or remodeling. But there's a, a market when you're, once the kids leave the nest, you know, go to college, begin their own lives, and the focus turns into like um, buying, selling, di- downsizing, or relocating yes. for a career move. Um, so that's a, a big group of people in market that I actually work with, and I have so much fun with them. But when I <laughs> met Cindy, when I met Cindy, <laughs> boy, were we were we in alignment because she is a realtor and she understands the importance of um, getting the house ready to sell and like all and, and she knows statistics and so. Personally, me, it was so nice to work with someone who automatically understood. And, but like, there was a connection for me, and I think <laughs> with you too, like, we kind of got each other at some level, and we worked really yep. well together. You and, you and your husband, I mean, I remember leaving there and, uh, and saying, oh, my gosh, they love each other. They are doing this together. They are like team workers, and they were able to discuss things and like come to decisions, even hard decisions on on things like letting go. Like y'all, y'all really like have some things that you know were brought emotions important up. To us. And, yeah, yes, very important to you and, and part of your journey through life. But anyway, so I I thought y'all were an amazing couple, and well, thank you. I was so happy to work with y'all and meet you both. And so y'all, y'all were great. Like, I was like, if I could have an ideal client, you guys would represent them. And so oh. I love working. <laughs> we I love working. Same... <laughs> you... We felt the exact same way about you. The thing, uh, you know, David, David and I have been moved around so many times with the company, which we're very grateful for. But you're right, David is my partner for life, and I would I feel grateful every day that he's my guy. And um, we, do, we do think a lot alike, but a lot of times David and I think a lot differently, which makes us good in a different way. But Melody was so good. Girl, you were wonderful because you thought you gave us the questions that we got to answer together that made us realize, hey, maybe we don't need this after all. And to streamline our house and to make our house, it looked so good that we had multiple offers the first three days the house was on the market. And it was, and this was in a tight market with us, with a more of a higher cost home, which you don't really usually get that. But, and I think a lot of it was because of you, Melanie, and how you made our house look. Oh, wow. Y'all, you... Y'all did the work there. 
<laughs> that was needed. So I have, you know, like you really, even though, you, so this is an example of going into someone's home and it, it really looks amazing. It's a beautiful home and it's, um, and even though it wasn't like, I mean, it could have sold, you know what I mean? Like it could have mm-hmm. sold, but once we started digging into the cabinets and the, you know, just the pinch, we, we went into a lot of spaces and just yes. when, when you began to let go, like, even though the things had storage spaces, releasing it and creating, I, I call it giving relief to a space to that point where you're like, yeah. oh man, that feels good. And just going through and doing that to a lot of different spaces and closets. And then I always say, when people come to me, they're like, oh, I want to help organizing. And really, I used, I used to get upset because I'm like, I'm not really an organizer because I know that organizing is much easier when you have less stuff. So it's more like, yeah. let's, let's see what we can pull away. And then it's going to be easy or easier for sure. And so mm-hmm. that's where like streamlining comes on and, um, mm-hmm. and it does make it easier and, and to make everything neat and tidy. And, mm-hmm. um, but were you amazed at how much came out, even though I was shocked, girl, I was just <laughs> like, you know, and it's funny cause we have a very large, we have a large kitchen with a lot of space, but you mm-hmm. kind of would ask the questions in a gentle way. Well, do you really need, 40 settings of tableware, which I had 40 settings of tableware because I had just collected all that and we used to entertain all the time. But now that we're older, we don't entertain that much and we don't entertain more than 15 at a time. So it kind of, what you, it gave me the freedom to say, hmm, you know what? I don't need all this. And now that we're in the new house and we have the space is cut quite a bit. Um, it fits perfectly in the new house. I mean, it's freeing. What you do is you kind of free us from our. I, I want to say of being afraid of not of getting rid of it. It felt great, though. Yeah, I I, I can um, just from working with other people, and when you're talking about like all the entertaining you used to do. Um, and that you can still do. That's the thing. You can still yeah. do it. And you still have what you need to do it. Um, there was a lady that I worked with. Um, her husband was a cardiologist. And so they would they would put on these big events, uh, like mm-hmm. at Christmas time, and invite any pe- you know, people into their homes. And she had a, um, I don't want to say like a, uh, what are they called? I know there's like the butler pantries. She had like a room that could be like a child size room, but it was just full with shelves and it was completely filled with and neatly done with um, serving pieces for these like parties. Yes. Her, and her china closet. Yeah. With Pacific cloth. Yeah. And, and so they had from the crystal, you know, whatever yeah. the theme would be like, you know, it might be white. It might be, but she had plenty of glass. They, they had all the mm-hmm. serving pieces, but it was a lot. And so this yeah. is what reminds me of the entertaining. So when she contacted me and we started working together and I asked her, I'm like, do you want to do that anymore? Like, is this your future? You know, y'all are going into retirement and, um, and she was trying to downsize and they're doing one last remodel of the home. Mm-hmm. This is what I, I work with people that do this common when they're getting ready for retirement, they'll do like, let's just make sure all the appliances are not going to break down on us, like remodel the mm-hmm. kitchen or whatever. They're, they're one last remodel if they're going to stay in that home. But when right. I asked her, is that what you want to like, is that what you want to do? And she's like, no, you know what? I, I don't want to do that anymore. And I said, well, one way to make that decision is to begin to let it go. And that shifts it. It's, it's going to, um, just yeah. by saying, you know what, I don't want to do that anymore. Like you can keep what you need to still do it, but not at that level. And so yeah, and I, what, I agree yeah, with that. Out. completely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to keep my fun quality stuff. And that's what I think mm-hmm. you and I got rid of so much of, we got rid of the stuff that, okay, we've built it up for some reason that this has been collected over the last 40 years. And then 
now that we're moving into the new home, or I wanted it to be kind of, I wanted to keep the stuff that I wanted, the quality things that I wanted, but I didn't need to have a ton of other things. And it really, I have not missed a single thing since we've been here. And actually, it just gives me so much more energy to use the things that I have. Yes, it's amazing. Yes, I hear these things are the relief, and then I still have everything I need, and I'm excited about it. It's not overwhelming. Some people don't realize that um, their stuff can, they get so used to it. And they're not letting go of it for whatever reason, and, and it's perfectly fine. Like, no judgment at all there. But then once they do start letting go, and then they let go of a little more and a little more, and they actually scare me sometimes because they're, like, <laughs> letting go of everything. I'm like, wait, that's... I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Your, your, your body has to adjust to this, like, the energy thing, like... <laughs> like you you have built a tolerance level for some people you know yeah. you've built a tolerance level for this amount of stuff and when they start removing it and like oh that feels good oh my gosh that looks good and uh and there's there does tend to be more pro- the lightness this is how yeah. people describe it and like they feel lighter like and the energy piece and more it's like it's just easier because there's less decisions to make. What am I, you know, which platters am I going to use? Well, these are my options now. Like it's down to like, yeah. okay, we've got three platters. Um, but anyway, just there's a, a lot of different levels of um, how it affects you when you like let go, but keep your like favorite and your quality pieces. And, mm-hmm. and um, I get that a lot. But some people do scare me because they'll go on and they're like, I throw away everything in the attic and I throw, you know, or I donate it. Like I completely, and when I say scare me, cause I know like the body is adjusting to and the mental, like it's yeah. all adjusting. And uh, I'm like, oh, yeah. slow down. You're scaring me. <laughs> but they're fine. <laughs> like they're. <laughs> you know what? Like, we got rid of all of, we got rid of all the stuff that we had when I guess the, you know, the kids were growing up in that, you know how you go and you get these, you somehow when you're you collect all these things when your kid is playing sports and you've got all these plastic cups and we got rid of so much of that and I never realized I stopped using all my really cool things because we had these plastic things plastic cups plastic plates melamine plates that I'd gotten at Target and you know just stuff that I thought oh well I'm just going to use this because it's easy but since we got rid of all that, we've been using this glorious, beautiful uh, wine glasses that we have at night and gorgeous, these glasses that we've been keeping for some reason that we haven't been using, these gorgeous lead crystal glasses for dinner. And now I just threw the other stuff away except for the stuff that we take out by the pool. And we actually are using it and enjoying it. And I thought, you know what? We're just going to start using this good stuff because why not? I love it. I just feel so much better since we've gotten rid of everything. I love hearing that. Yeah, I wouldn't using yeah, getting rid of some of the plastic stuff and uh, yeah. using the nice, the nicer stuff, and it feels good. Huh? I can tell it feels good. It, like, oh. it does. It makes you feel like a princess. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it makes. It's like an elevation and a, um, I've, I've said this a lot and some people, it just depends on their mindset. And, but I'm like, um, if you'll take away the ugly and what I mean by Mm. ugly is you have all these beautiful things, but then you have all these things and it's actually detracting from it. Um, yes from the, the theme or the style that you have, because there's these pieces that, that um, for whatever reason that came in, like, it, like I'll give an example. Uh, so let's say in someone's living room, it's all beautiful. And then for whatever reason, they brought in like this plastic three drawer container because they needed some storage oh. and it was just a, an easy fix. And, yeah. um, and, and instead of like cleaning out another area to make space, for something in the living room they brought this in and it just it 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 detracts and it just it ruins the whole vibe yeah and so I was like okay get rid of the 
ugly, and that's that's an example of what I mean by the ugly, and um, and yeah. you're left with the beautiful, and just you know find another way to make it work, or or get a piece that'll go with uh, to keep that same elevated state of the room already. And so I kind of I like thinking like with the the difference between the random plastic cups and and these beautiful wine, you know, these goblets or wine glasses that you can use. Yeah. So, and certainly That's they a, serve their purpose. The, those glasses yeah. serve the purpose for what they need it. And um, and you still have some things to take out by the pool that are not glass. But, um, yeah, I love that story. And I love hearing how you're using, yeah, you feel like a princess now. <laughs> well, you know what? Even though David and I may – I may get a Stouffer's I may get a Stouffer's lasagna in the oven at night, and we throw together a bag salad. But somehow it just tastes better when we have it on beautiful, um, on beautiful dinnerware. And then we're using our wonderful china. We took our china out, and then we're using our silver, you know, and we're just enjoying it. I, I think that's just the way things are meant to be now. Yeah. I've, okay, so I'm going to segue here because I want to talk about real estate. But this is, I'm going to tell you what just went through my mind when you said that. Okay. So this is the lifestyle you want now because right. what phase of life are you in? Well, we're in our retirement years. And, you know, we, we just retired from Houston, in, to Houston. And so we are kind of more now. I, I like to describe us as college age kids, but this time we have money. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. We're now, free to do whatever we want. I love that. And okay, so so now let me take it to the next point from a realtor's okay. angle. What do people that are in the same position or phase of life that you're in, what do they want in a home when they go to buy? I, I can tell you right away, um, having been in the real estate industry for over 23 years now, um, they want quality, not quantity. And that's very hard to find at this at right now in buildings. But because of the quality aspect, we want things that are crown molding, or if they want modern, they want nice straight walls, um, just depending on what style they are. And so a lot of times that goes with a smaller amount of closet space. So you've got to be aware of that. Or you want customized qual or you want customized closet space. So whatever your client is looking for, that's how you've got to get out there as a realtor and figure out what they want and then go to town and give them what they need. Ooh. And I remember you saying this um, when we spoke on the phone the other day, right. when we were, you know, just chatting before doing this call together. And you said that, um, and you can correct me if I say it wrong, but it's not so much that they want more space. They can do small space, but they want it luxury. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Most definitely. Uh, and I think, I guess because I'm in this demographic market and I am this target market, you know, what we've done is we've raised our children and we've gone through the plastic cup phase. We've gone through um, the being less than what we need because our kids are, we're paying for our kids to go through college if we're lucky enough to be able to help them and to do that. And so then you kind of take another hit on your income, getting everybody through college and then once you have everybody through college, it's like you automatically have gotten a raise. Um, and so what you're looking for, and you don't need the big house that you've lived in for the last 14 years, which is your middle house, which is the house that you've paid the most for. Um, and you're looking now to downsize as far as uh, space because, one, you don't need the space. You want to have big enough for when people come to visit but two, you don't need all the extra space. And so what you're looking for is more of a luxury home that has enough for a guest room for quick stays because more than likely your children aren't going to stay very long. And um, then just actual living space. Hmm. 
What does luxury mean? Luxury means different things to different people. Luxury may be location. Luxury may be living close to the airport. Luxury may be living close to the grocery store. Luxury may be architectural detailing. Luxury may be living in a space where everything is taken care of for you, like a high rise or a townhome or a condominium. Luxury means different things to different people. So as a realtor, what my job is, is to find out exactly what my clients are interested in. And once I find out what they're interested in, then we talk budget. And once the budget is taken care of, then we kind of go after what they need. And one of the things that I always say when I'm with my client is, after we've decided that we want to work together as a team, is say, let's sit down and make a list. What are the things that you really want, but what were the things that you would be able to live without if it wasn't within your budget? And so after we kind of do a pro and a con of everything that we need, then let's realistically see if we can find that. And then if we can't find that, then let's see what we can get as close as we can to. Um, And, of course, living where I live, Um, And I have people that are, I'm a relocation realtor, meaning that people come in from all over the world to work with me. And so I have to find a million, hundreds of different types of homes for an international market versus, and also a a United States market. So luxury means a lot of different things to different people. Okay. I love that. Um... (laughs) I, do, I mean, like, if, if, like my mind is one luxury to mean like what it looks like when they step in, like, you know, a bathroom that has, you know, this, just, it doesn't have to be a large bathroom, but it has, it has to be a really nice bathroom um, mm-hmm. as far as visually. And right. it still has to be like, oh my gosh, I want to go in here and, you know, enjoy my bathroom. And it's a beautiful bathroom. Just before and, I even and you put know, anything in it, it's beautiful. Yeah, and I have a lot of single, young, very successful clients. And you would think when we're building new construction for them that they would want to have double sinks. But, you know, a lot of people now who are single who are incorporating a single lifestyle, they may only want one very large sink with a, with a, a very – nice light up mirror or they may want a three way mirror depending on what we're doing as far as a custom. I have a client right now that I'm working with. She's a CEO startup for a, a, a computer company and something that we're doing for her is um, we're doing all these things. She was like, I, whenever I look at houses, all I see is stuff for, for two people. Well, I'm only going to be a single person for the rest of my life. It's what I'm planning for. So I want my house to be luxury for me. And so Mm. we couldn't find what she wanted. And so we're building a custom house for her that has, her bathroom is just amazing. Um, You go in and it's a very, very large sink. And then she's got a full-on makeup mirror vanity area, huge vanity area with custom pullouts for all her appliances. She's got slotted areas in the drawers for all of her different makeups. She's got a three-way mirror that moves, and she's got a rolling rack in her closet to roll her to roll her uh, clothes around for winter, spring, summer, and fall. That's luxury. Mm. <laughs> That's luxury. There was a late. So there's a lady I worked with. She's she was a pharmaceutical rep, and um, uh-huh. she was married, and she was uh, 30. And she called me in to help with her office because she had a home office, and she right. she was a top seller. And she said, Ooh. you know, the the company like her, you know, her bonus checks were like thirty thousand dollars. Um, oh my God. And they, they're calling her in and like she's, when I say top ranking, like she's way up there. And, she, and so when they mm-hmm. they um, call her in, um, they want her to like teach the other reps, like what are you doing? And she, she's right. like, I don't know what I'm doing. 
like I'm going in. She's like, I study. Um, I mean, her, her office had gotten like the paperwork was getting out right. of control. And so yeah. just going in to separate, like, okay, she needs to study this product, you know, like just sectioning it off and, and cleaning up right. the file system and like all the um, samples that she would mm-hmm. sell. And it's mm-hmm. something that she came up with and I thought it was beautiful for her office. She had the shelves, but then you can go into like Lowe's and get those. It's almost like a room divider and it, mm-hmm. It makes it like you hang it from the ceiling all the way across, and it's really nice and beautiful. And and it completely will open across the entire room. But it, wow. it hides the shelves. It, like, makes a wall uh-huh. there, but it's really nice. And um, How cool. At, yeah, I mean, she, she found that. And I was like, that is the most, like, that is beautiful in here. And I'm, I'm highly impressed. And it, it looks really nice. And so mm-hmm. just, like, straightening up behind it but yeah. but all her um her where was I going with this she was just a top ranking uh professional and mm-hmm. and and she was overwhelmed with the paperwork and the stuff and she needed to study and you know and have life and she'd get mm-hmm. she'd look completely different when she dressed up I guess you're talking about this client of yours, like she went into work mode and, um, yeah. and just keeping it when she steps, gets back home and steps into the office so that she can focus and be productive and like just straightening everything up and, and, and making it a uh, flow for her. And so that she could focus and cause she started like things were getting too crazy. She was wanted everywhere mm-hmm. and they wanted to send her everywhere. <laughs> and so, cause she was yeah. such a, a top producer. But, um, Organi- organization is key. I think anything as a realtor, I keep detailed detailed files on every single client. But you're right. When you're so busy, when I'm working with right now, I'm only working with seven or eight clients. But I keep detailed records of every client just so I can be the best realtor that I can. And you're right. It's very hard hard to stay organized. I keep files on every single client, but every time I talk to them, if there's something that I remember that we've had in a conversation that I want to add to their file, it is hard to keep up with that. But the most important thing for me to do my job and do it well is to make sure that I'm organized. Yeah, and I'm I, I'm sure like um, for any professionals that you work with, I, like for this lady that you're just talking about what you're building, like is, is there an mm-hmm. office space for her? Like, you know, uh, we're in the we, time where like a lot of people work from home and. No. She works, she works, uh, well, she works seven days a week basically, but she, we made, we are making her an absolutely incredible office with French doors. We're doing a kind of a white distress. Um, she, we started with this because she had this desk that was her mother's. And so we're having, we're having it redone in white with black French pen. And then we're going Mm. back behind her because she doesn't, she wanted more of a furniture look because it's in her home, even though she's having to, she's not having to, she's getting to work out of her office, out of her home for her office. So we're doing a lot of furniture details. So instead of having a, like an L-shaped desk. We're having her look, her beautiful French desk with, it's white with black French pen. We're having it look out over the front yard. But then on one of the facing walls, we're doing a whole line of custom bookshelves so that she can, you know, access all of her files. And then we're doing a whole another wall of behind her of closed shelving that will have um, file cases un- behind the bookshelves. So we're doing a beautiful, absolutely stunning office for her that looks like, sounds, a, basically, it looks like a library reading room. It sounds stunning. Like, even the details, like, the, the when you walk into the office mm-hmm. and the, the closed cabinets, that mm-hmm. on the it sounds like on the opposite wall, um, it's 
It's open shelving? Yeah, it's open shelving on one wheel. Okay. On one wheel. She's got a ton of, um, like, I don't want to say trophies, but, you know, when she's given awards and things like that. Mm. So she wanted that all to show. But she's all, <laughs> she's so funny. She collects troll dolls. And so she wanted, yeah. she, she, she wanted to show off her troll dolls, too. So she's got troll dolls in with these multi-million dollar <laughs> awards <laughs> and things like that. But hey, whatever you want, that's for your, that's for her. So anyway, so that's and then right. We're doing it. Yeah, and then we're doing the wall color in a soft blush pink. So it's mm. real. It really is a beautiful room. It's white with the soft. The cabinetry is all white, but then the walls are going to be this soft blush pink with this super white. It's Sherwin Williams super white, like triple crown molding, and the the. Ceilings, of course, are very, very tall, and then we're doing a wallpaper on the ceiling, if you can believe that or not. We're putting some wallpaper in the back of some of the shelving, too. I, oh, my goodness. The wallpaper uh, on the ceiling, the first time I mm-hmm. ever saw that, and it was another client that I worked with, I was so impressed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I couldn't stop. It it moved me. Like, it, it was is. so impressive. It's, yeah, and she's worked in Europe a lot. And so mm-hmm. we're using a Liberty of London wallpaper, and it is, my gosh, if you have the money for it, it was just, it's going to be stunning. It is absolutely going to be stunning. Just you saying wallpaper on the ceiling, I immediately have, an, I have multiple associations with it from clients, and mm-hmm. it's something I've wanted to do for myself. But yeah. I don't know which wallpaper to pick out. Like, I'm like, oh, my <laughs> gosh, that is so beautiful. I'm one of those people, like, it's good in theory until I go pick something out and it doesn't go. Or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. my designer one, one the, eye. Yeah. One of the best things, you, and I don't know if you've gone to Target, but Target has this really easy stick-on wallpaper that you can kind of test stuff out with just to see if you like it. And uh, well, some of our, two of our friends have used that Target wallpaper. It looks amazing. I was just so stunned how great it looked and then they kind of got a little more daring and they redid a dining room wall and kind of went to town on it but yeah wallpaper is really having a heyday coming slowly back into um back into prominence yeah i was i wanted to um ask you about wallpaper because i've noticed Mm -hmm. it um and and some houses that are like up for sale. I love looking mm-hmm. at houses. I'll go online. I go in person. <laughs> um, and, and when I'm working with people and I get to see things, but yeah. I've noticed. I'm like, is wallpaper trending back in like in that way? Um, like doing one wallpaper. Wall? Yeah, wallpaper is very much in in the higher end houses. Reason being, people who have a lot more disposable income are more easily attracted or they know that they can take it down once it becomes out of fashion. Um, a lot of, say, median houses then would go more with an accent wall. And then, you know, I can remember when we got our first house, which was, I think, $32,000. But That tells you how old I am. Um, you know, I wallpapered, our, I wallpapered our entryway ourselves with the Waverly wallpaper. And, you know, I was so thrilled with it, and it made me so happy. I've always loved wallpaper. I've, I've always been a big proponent of wallpaper. Um, and I just, I don't know, I think it adds so much, especially if you have tall ceilings, which so many houses now have those big, tall ceilings. Um, you know, it really pulls it back down to earth. You know, your decorators will always tell you you need a piece of black in every room and you need a piece of wow in every room. And as a realtor, I've followed that Steph, I've worked with a lot of really great decorators, and so I know as a, a realtor, you need a piece of wow that you always remember that house. So as people are mm. getting their houses ready to sell, as we go through the house, say it's a, you know, a lot of they don't, people don't, a lot of people don't enjoy decorating very much. I'll always try and say, okay, let's bring in a fresh plant here. Let's bring in something that the room will pick up we'll pick up the room and give it just a little more life or let's go to Ikea and let's buy a giant poster in a good color that'll match with a, a, a rug that you have or, some, you know, something that we can 
really perk it up so that the client who's buying the house will re- say, oh, my gosh, yeah, we got to go to that house that had the antler chandelier or we've got to go to that house that had the moose on the wall. <laughs> the antler house. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. I, um, uh, yeah, and, and if a street has a great name, like I have a very good friend, and she lives on Honeysuckle. And so I'm like, oh. the honey, I call it the Honeysuckle House. And it's I beautiful. That. And she's like, remodeling like oh my gosh if you could see what she's doing and oh. she's over in Dallas I'm, well. I need to be popping in she's like can you please help me and I'm like oh. she, cause she's, she's an ER nurse she works a lot of hours and, and yeah. anyways she's um you know she's invested a lot she's worked really hard and right. and she's doing the remodeling and it's so beautiful but anyway I'm like the honeysuckle mm-hmm. house but the I love house, that. The, yeah. Um, I always tell clients a lot of times I'll say, you know, if they have a lot of people have brown furniture for some reason or black furniture now, I always say the thing that could really help zhuzh up a room is if you go and find some really cool pillows in a really great color, not something that will match, but something that pops out. Then that's how another do they pick quick a color? Way. Well, it's really, okay, I'll tell you how you pick a color. <clears throat> Go on Pinterest and say, say your couch is green. Our couches are green. Say, what are the best colors to decorate a green house, couch? And then they'll pull up, that'll, gosh, it'll pull up thousands of different ideas. And then you can just go on, then you can screenshot that picture and then if you then if you do that and then Google I it and Google will tell you where to buy that where the where to buy that uh pillow. Mm. Okay. You got we got lots of technology going on. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm I am all about some AI right now. I'm not even gonna right? lie. I'm I love it. And I know there's a lot of controversy around it, but Yeah. It's my therapist, even okay. If you can do so, after you've come and after Melody, you've gotten them organized and completely cleaned out and cleared out. Then they can go visit model homes, take photos of those model homes, and there's nothing wrong with copying those because well, I work with builders and we spend we may spend one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get a home ready as far as with furniture decorating, and there's nothing wrong with copying that. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. They have great ideas, and if you see something that you really relate to, you can do that, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's a compliment. Oh, yeah. I love that. So I'm going to be – I've I've worked with a couple um, as they entered, started entering the retirement years downsizing right. and cleaning out and just a consistent steady flow we might do some in the spring and they travel in the summer and then we pick up again in the fall mm-hmm. and so started doing this process with them and then mm-hmm. and, and I mean over many years like it's because they had like three levels I mean it was just a lot the parents have passed away um family mm-hmm. members so they've inherited things you know, and the kids don't want it. They want may want yeah. a few things, but they don't really want it. And it, giving them time to process it and and just really doing some cleaning out in every area of the home. And so, right. and then the pants, so they were like, we're going to downsize. We're going to buy this little place, low maintenance, one one level. Like, and they're really planning and preparing for, you know, life. And um, and they want it right. to be, they want to be liberated from, from yeah taking care of all this stuff. And so they, uh, pandemic, everything stopped. And so, you know, a few years goes by and we start working again. And they, you know, had some um, flooring redone, had some ceilings redone. So doing some updates and remodeling, not knowing if they would still stay there or eventually move out. But they just found a house. And so yeah. they put an offer. Yeah, they put an offer on it. And I'm I'm working with them in real time as it's all happening. And then they're like, the realtor wants to come take pictures. And so 
I have a couple things that I want to ask you about this. So they have okay. these, so they boxed up like some of the, um, they've gone through a lot and it's pretty much cleaned out, like boxed up old photos, uh, uh, paperwork, memorabilia. So they have all these boxes and they're still mm-hmm. sorting through things, but um, they're like, where do I put them? Do we put them in the garage? I'm like, I'm like, move this bed over here. And on this wall that you can't see when you walk in, I'm like, if you can make it really neat and consistent, uh, maybe right there. I didn't know. Uh, we started talking about, like, do you want to be motivated to sell or not? Yeah. And by that, I meant if they see these boxes and y'all are, like, desperate to sell, you yeah. know, will people lowball them? And, like, but they're not desperate to sell immediately, but they obviously – they're not in a rush they to want sell, to buy but, the they, new house. but they already made the offer. They can do it. The, their rules are like, I have people now to come look at it. Like, let's move it. And um, they weren't ready for that. And so, so they're like scrambling, like, oh, all these boxes and clean this room up. And because when you're yeah. cleaning things out, it becomes really messy. And so oh, yeah. what I have, so I'm going to go with two questions. But one of them, I'm going to come back and ask you about motivated to sell. But here's what's happening okay. now. They, I'm flying to them um, after they close. Like everything's in motion. It looks like everything's going well. Um, okay. So I'm actually going to fly up there and help them unpack and settle in. Okay. But while their house is still on the market, so they had two people yesterday um, come look at the house. Okay. I don't know the results of that. But if that house is still up for sale, I want to walk through it. And using some of the advice that you're giving and um, maybe go buy the pillows or pop something in a mm-hmm. room because they haven't moved the furniture yet. That's going to happen at the end of the month. And, um, okay. But I'm just, like, I'm listening to some of your advice, like, ooh, go into a model home and, like, what else mm-hmm. can I do to serve them to help this house sell? First then, of all, I think. Where do they need to, those boxes? Yeah, the boxes need to go in the garage. In an or okay. do they have a two car garage or do they have a one car garage? Um, they said it was pretty like they can fit their car in the garage, but there it is full. They'd have to move the car to put the boxes. So okay, I don't know if they have the one garage or two. when you're selling the garage when you're selling your house is a free. I call it the free zone because everybody knows that when you're getting your house ready to sell, and we can all relate to this, we have too much stuff. And so we intend to pack up our stuff and move it into a garage. If it, if we can, the best thing to do would be to move it to a storage unit. But if mm-hmm. you can't do that, the garage is your free zone. But the thing that will run people away, first of all, it has to smell good. So what the first thing I always tell people is choose a signature smell of the house. You're not going to have any other smell except for that one smell. And the universal smell, depending on if, if your target market could be a um, Pan Pacific family or if you have someone that, if you think it will just be like a subdivision home where, you know, it will be kind of a easy easy sell, I always say the best smell that you can ever, ever use is orange. And my favorite mm-hmm. thing – my favorite thing to tell people is there's a brand and it's called Time P H Y M E S and it's called Mandarin Coriander. That's the smell. And the reason I say Mandarin Coriander is so good is because it's not female or male specific. Both males and females like the smell. The only thing that's better than that is cinnamon, but a lot of people now have cinnamon allergies, and so if you have mm-hmm. cinnamon in, they're like, we're out of here. So, But the one thing that is good for everyone is Mandarin Coriander Times brand. It's not gender-specific. Men like the smell as well as women like the smell. It's fresh. Orange makes you feel upbeat and puts you in a good mood. So the number one thing I would say is make sure your house doesn't stink. The second thing is your your garage is your free zone. The third thing is, and I tell this to every single client, when you sell your house, it's like you go to battle. And the house must look like, must be spotlessly clean, 
and look like you don't live there. And therein lies your battle. Hmm. Because it's very hard, very, very hard to keep your house meticulously clean and still live there. So it's a constant battle of keeping things clean every single day, of re-cleaning things every single day. Because if it's between your house and another house and they're even the same floor plan, the house that's clean is going to win because people are pre-programmed to if the house is not organized, which is I think one of the reasons that you got our house selling so quickly with multiple offers within three days and they got into a bidding war for our house is um, is that our house was extremely clean, extremely, extremely clean. And if there's two mm-hmm. houses side by side, people are going to think, wow, if they keep their house this clean, then they keep things taken care of, then things are yeah. proper, properly managed. I'm willing to pay more for this house than the house next door that's the exact same floor plan, but the kids' toys are out there. There's crayon marks on the wall. Um, the bathroom is messy with 50 different uh, types of products in there. Those, yeah, that so are the main strategies. I love that, and 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 this is where I come in. Like to be able to keep it clean, you need to be able to immediately put things away. And if you can't put those things away easily because you have too much stuff in your cabinets, you have too much stuff in your drawers, like let's clean it out. Like. You yeah. need to be able to pop, 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 move out of the house and when yeah. someone comes in. Yeah, and you need to remove all personal. If you have picture family, families of your pictures or family pictures, all those need to be taken down. But then after you take those pictures down, if there's nail holes, then you need to get mm-hmm. out the crest toothpaste or the toilet paper and plug those holes and then take a teeny tiny paintbrush and paint over that hole. Um, and I've, those I've are done the toothpaste that trick. To yeah, the toothpaste trick works great. Or <laughs> stuff toilet paper in there, white toilet paper in there, and then put the toothpaste on top of it and then paint on top of that. Yeah. Wow. I love that. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to go back to your coriander. I, I just uh-huh. have to Mandarin add this coriander. For any- Mandarin coriander, but coriander is what I put on salmon, and it's so amazing. Mm-hmm. It it yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm like, so I'm like, oh yeah. no, I like coriander. So mixing it with the mandarin, like a smell like that, I can, yeah, I, I just want to go get a candle like that so I can see what it's <laughs> smell it. Well, like well, right now, is, yeah, the brand is Time T H Y M E, and what. Really and truly, you can get it on Amazon, um, and it, by the time, if you do a five-bedroom house, it'll be about $160 because you can out, you can out, you can put all the bathrooms. We had five bathrooms in our last house, or five and a half bathrooms, and then I put the soap, I would purchase the soap, the hand soap, and then a lotion beside it so that after you wash your hands and you put lotion on it, that keeps the smells in, you know, good good smells. In the kitchen, there's a spray where you can spray down your cabinets. Um, I do all that. Yeah, and it just, and it, it, it sets the vibe for your house. You don't want to, the only other smell that's acceptable is Clorox or Pine Sol, a, the cleaning okay. smell. Yeah. Okay. But you know what? So not, not vanilla. Those, yeah, no, vanilla is so overrated. No, not vanilla. Okay. I've yeah, heard like no. vanilla or cook or make it smell like you bake in cookies or I've heard that yeah. before. I, and you know what? That was really good a long time ago because there weren't the availability of things that there are available now. But what you're looking for is you want to give, you want to, I guess, really attack them on as many senses as you can. And um, so if you can get them on the smell, that's just what you're one more step ahead of everybody else. Right. And I, when you, I've talked about this before with people uh, when you're talking about the senses, because um, when they 
when they start liking something, and this is just what I notice and it's what I do, they'll start touching the counters or they'll touch the cabinet. Like they will run their hand on it or in the, like even if they don't realize what they're doing. And yes. it's still like a super clean, uh, smooth counter or that cabinet mm. or when they reach in and touch the shelf. Like when they start touching things or touching the wood mm. and uh, like I've, yeah. that's something I've noticed. And um and I'm like make sure no matter what they touch it feels good, and um and clean, clean and cl- yeah like it's clean, and yeah cleanliness is so mm-hmm. impressive and yeah and to know that someone has really taken care of their home gives me so much more confidence and exactly and it, and it gives me a view of what my life can be like. When I see yeah. someone that has their closets are clean and it's neat and it's orderly, um, mm-hmm. it's it is a I can project myself and go wow like especially if I'm someone that maybe isn't that neat or I'm overwhelmed or you know what I mean like mm-hmm. it gives me so much hope to see these homes that are taken care of and organized and not every you know. And there's still space in the closet. It's not overstuffed. And, um, yeah, and it's not crammed. And if you have mm-hmm. leave those little spaces, oh, my mm-hmm. gosh, you're way ahead of the game. I always say, like, this is my secret ingredient. Like, we, it can be, we need, however large the closet is, one-third of that is going to be open space. However, we oh my. You know, in different sections. You're a genius. Yeah, one-third at least. You're a genius. Yes. I agree. Like room to grow. I mean, I don't, you don't want it too bare. In my right. and this is just my opinion and my my intuitive, sensual, <laughs> my uh, yeah. visual spatial skills. Like, get, I want to see extra room because for me that's like, mm-hmm. wow, they can fit all this in there, and uh, but and there's still space left over, and it's not crammed. Yeah. You can move around. You can get to everything, and so. Well, do you remember? Um, like working with you and your husband when we did. Mm-hmm. So he had he had the smaller closet. Yes, and yours was a you Me. know a little bit larger. <laughs> and so, y'all went to town on David's closet. <laughs> and when you walk in, and your face of what we piled up to go, oh, um, and that he was letting go of. Do you remember that? I know, I know, it was so cool. But and for so, David to throw those things away was just like, I'm so proud of y'all. And kind of the <laughs> point was, even though his closet, it, I mean, there was still space on the shelves. I mean, yeah, the the rod was full, and you know, there's shoes, but it it wasn't extreme, like messy or anything like that. You know what I mean? It was it was still oh, no. clean and neat, and but. But did he need those twelve pairs? Yeah, but did he need those twelve pairs of shoes that he with that he used twenty years ago? No, he did not. And right. thankfully, you you let him understand. You helped him understand that he didn't need those shoes anymore. And I helped him good. understand. I helped him understand that the reason there are dust on all these shoes is because you don't use them. <laughs> you want to keep keep them I'm like I'm by no means like worse than people do like I, but just like I'm like oh I see the clues like there's dust t- I can tell you what you do or do not use pretty quickly yeah, exactly. and, um, and those are my clues like the and and the thicker the dust <laughs> and obviously if you want to keep it like Keep it, but it's just yeah. I start looking at the little clues just for my experience yeah. working with people. But even though his closet was small, we took out a lot of stuff, and and there was still stuff in his closet, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, and it, you did good. And but it, it made him and, realize the things that he needed and he enjoyed that he wore the most. And why not keep those things and toss the others? Yes, and it's right there, and and that's kind of a the example of. I don't want to say ugly, but take away the ugly. I don't mean it like it's visually ugly. Yeah. I just mean like these are the things that you're not using. No, these get to shine, and it's so much easier, and you have less decisions to make. Like because right. the things you love are right here. 
And when, when you went in my closet and we got rid of those clothes that I kept saying, as soon as I lose 80 pounds, I'm going to get right back into that outfit. And you said, are you still going to want that outfit or are you going to want new outfits? That sat with mm. me and I thought, hmm, you know what? You're right, Melody. Let's get rid of those things because we don't need those. I'm going to want new outfits. Yeah, and, and, you know, even, like, some of the things you may not have, like, worn um, often. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're always going to have classic pieces that maybe, you know, you can keep, and, and they're still going to be – you can mix them with the trendy stuff, and, you know, there's yeah. pieces like that. But um, but I think one of the fun things that we did in your closet was uh, take some of the things that were on the – like some of your shoes and boots and how we yeah. cleaned off the shelves and, and made it artistic with your, um, oh, uh, like, I we love show, that. like we displayed like kind of like it was in a store. Your, yeah. Your you displayed my, so pair, my five pair, and you displayed my five pairs of cowboy boots. Yeah. And yeah, my, on a top shelf. I, mean, I love purses and you made my purses look like a store. It looks flipping awesome. And so, like, even, yeah, so that's the fun part. And, hey, I've done in my pantry, just to make it more fun, on one shelf, um, this is at one place that I lived, it, it, they were solid shelves. They weren't the, the wiring, the uh, ventilated yeah. shelving. But but I created enough space to put, and it was a plant that uh, in a really pretty, it wasn't a real plant, but it made me so happy to open my pantry and there was space around it. Like, it was like it was kind of sitting on a bookshelf or something like you would decorate in your house, wow. except it was in my pantry. And I love it, that. It, it made me so happy. <laughs> and it made my pantry look like, pretty. It made my pantry look pretty and like there's space and, um, yeah. Because it wasn't crowded, like it had its own function there. And it was just at a perfect spot for me. And then, um, but doing that to the closet also, like mm-hmm. putting that little piece of luxury, if you will, in a yeah. in a closet or displaying or doing something artistic with it. I, I think that's fun if you can and, and if that's if you have some things that you want to display like that. So it's fun. And you know, it, it, Melody, when you say that, that's a wow factor because when a cl- someone goes in a client's home and there's room to put a plant in a, in a pantry. That's pretty much a wow factor in my book. And, boy, talk about way to remember that house. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's something what do you, you think do, they... girl. Well, thank you. I've, I've had people tell me, like, you don't understand how much, you know, you've helped me and, like, and uh, stuff like that. Like, I just want you to know, you know. And I'm like, no, no, no. Um, like, like, I get that I'm helping, but I give so much credit to the people because you're the one that has to make the decisions. And, like, I'm, yeah. I have this natural instinct and yeah. um, a visual spatial thing also. And just, you know, put some logic with it for the um, – what you need access to the easiest and what you can, you know, where it needs to be placed based on the function of it. And, like, yeah. putting the logic in with it. And so it's a good combination. I, I agree. I can't always pull off everything, but I'm going to do my best to, like, figure it out. And and when you're selling a house. If I could actually, at some point in my life, have been a realtor, I probably would have. How much? And I love the housing industry. And so... Mm-hmm. And like getting them, getting them ready, but it's also about being functional too. So, but yeah. but this arena of the home, um, like staging, yeah. which if there, so I'm gonna ask you a question when it comes to like staging where where someone brings in, if there's an empty house, does it need to have furniture in it? It depends on the architectural elements within the house itself. Say on okay. a modern house. If there's clean lines and it looks good, um, it, and that would help sell the house. Say it's a more traditional house that has, you know, triple crown molding, and if it's painted well, if the house doesn't really have any identity, then it needs to be staged. If the house speaks to itself, speaks to you empty, then it doesn't need to be staged. 
I would say mm-hmm. the majority of houses, say in a subdivision, if there's seven models of, you know, 150 houses, I would say you definitely, and you're trying, if you're up against, you know, there's three models of your same model for sale, then it definitely needs to be staged. If you're in a subdivision where your house is a standout, it doesn't need to be staged. Okay. What about even something, let's say they're not going to stage it, um, but something at the entryway that's like welcoming, like plants or okay. pot, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, just at the for door. Me, yeah. For me at the door, I, it, it depends on what your, who your target market is. If it's a guy, they don't see that. They move past okay. that and don't care. If it's a female, yes. You know, and if it's a, if it's a couple, then either one, either answer is right. For a girl, okay. she's looking at different things than a guy is. A guy is looking, a girl a lot of times is looking at storage. A guy mm-hmm. is looking at overall, a guy is looking at overall space and what he's interested yeah. in a lot of times. So, you know, you've got, they're looking at two distinctly different things. And you have to also judge their ability to work together and then sometimes you'll notice that one is more dominant over the other. So like if, a, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes the wife is more dominant and the guy will say, I just want whatever makes her happy. <clears throat> so you work with that. Or if a guy okay. is, you know, or if a, if a guy is more dominant and, you know, the wife says, what do you think about, you know. And a lot of times, you know, you just have to judge who your client is. Or... If you're the seller, you have to judge what the house is. If you're working with the buyer, you know, a lot of times I mainly, when I'm working with sellers, it's all about figuring out who the target market is that's going to purchase that house. And then it's staging or putting in things that that target market will purchase. If it's a millennial purchaser or a Gen Z purchaser, there's going to be things in there that I'm going to put in immediately to stage, um, you know, based on who they are, that I feel like who they are is going to be is their diet, to who's going to buy it. Even my wording, you know, I'll AI generate um, what the target market is and then develop mm-hmm. a, a listing information based on that. It's, it's yeah. so, so science. If- Everything's science now. So if someone's marketing to, um, well, let's say a family uh, that already, there are already kids and they're marketing mm-hmm. to a couple with children, like what would they need in their house? Like what's the a difference? With, yeah. A couple with children, if you're, if you're marketing your house, if you're marketing a house that would be if, to a family that's going to be what's going to be called their mid house. And a mid house mm-hmm. is the house that they're going to grow up in, that the kids are going to grow up in. And a mid house is the house that the family is typically going to stay the longest in because once they start in, in the school system, the parents aren't going to want to move the kiddos out of the school system until they graduate. Uh, unless, you know, there's a, they get relocated or transferred with their company. So for that, then you want to make sure that you put in kid-friendly options. So a bedroom, say you're an empty nester, but you have a house that you're marketing to a family, you're going to want to make sure that you do a bedroom, you're going to stage a bedroom that is completely about a child. Um, And if you feel like that you're an entry-level house, say you're a first-time home buyer house, you're going to want to put a crib in there. So because more than likely they'll only be in that house for five and seven, between five and seven years. So whoever's going to purchase that house is going to have a baby in that house. And then they're going to move to their mid-house. So, you know, you're going to look at your target market. It's all about looking at your target marketing and deciding who who they are. So, like, if you're you're doing a mid-level house, going to a house with family, well, that means they're going to be age 36 to 42, and they're going to have 2.3 children already. So you know from that point you've got to have, in your 
in your pantry, you're going to have fruit roll-ups. You know, in the refrigerator area, you're going to have things that the kids' snacks boxes that the kids can relate to. You know, you're going to have some things in the uh, in the towards the back door that would be kid toys to play with. You're going to have that bedroom that's going to be um, situated with a twin bed, a desk you know, things that kids would use. Wow. That's a wow factor like, right there. <laughs> so, you know, it's I've like, seen, I'm sorry, you you get me on a trail, and then I just, like, I, can't stop talking. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I already told you that I could talk to you for three hours straight and not stop. <laughs> um, so I've been in model homes. I've been at where that's, that is what's done. Um, Mm -hmm. And I pick up on it immediately. I'm like, this is the boys' room. This is the girls' room. Like, there's a twin bed. It's so cute, too. There's one photo on the wall, like an artwork. Um, So very well done. And so, and so, uh, so I, some of the clients I'm working with right now that are selling, like, this, their home is going to be, I'm going to guess it's going to be marketed to, the, for someone with the mid home and okay. that has children, but just because the amount of bedrooms that are in it and um, mm-hmm. it's a good entry point. And I'm totally don't have any statistics or know uh, these things. So I'm, I'm guessing based, mm-hmm. based on just my experience of working with different people. And, um, right. and so although their home doesn't have these things in it, um, mm-hmm. Like, I think it's cool to know, like, because, because I work with a lot of people that are retiring or you know, right. you know, preparing. And so, like, they don't have all that kid stuff anymore. They're not staging their house mm-hmm. like that. And it, mm-hmm. it was their mid-home. And so, like, yeah. hearing you say this, and it makes a lot of sense, like, even though they don't have these things, if they brought them in as if they yeah. had grandchildren, you know, they were setting That's up for exactly. grandchildren. Yeah. So. And then subliminal. Then you can go to the thrift store and you can go to Goodwill or you can go Mm -hmm. to the restoration hardware um, warehouse stores. There's a, and also you can look on Facebook marketplace. Um, There's so many different inexpensive ways to get it set up because you're right. There's a ton of empty nesters who are selling their house, who are getting ready to sell their house as soon as the interest rate goes down um, Mm -hmm. to these families. So, but you can also subliminally, if you don't have that or you don't, aren't able to do that, put those things that, like the fruit roll-ups, close by the refrigerator, not in the pantry or in a bowl, and then that subliminally reminds the target buyer that, oh, they had a kid or they have a kid or they have grandkids. There's different subliminal techniques that you can use, too. If you leave a jump rope, you know, by the, you know, around by the back door, or if you leave Crocs, you know, kids Crocs with the gibbets on them, you know, just there's different ways that you can subliminally signal this house is for a family. So even let's say, um, okay, like a guest bedroom that doesn't really have anything Mm -hmm. in it except for, uh, you know, a big bed, like throwing Mm -hmm. on pillows of characters maybe or something that's like children Heck yeah that would like something like that and then putting in a couple of totes of some toys like it wouldn't take much to to, to click in that subliminal messaging that absolutely not. that's exactly kids can live right. here and welcome here okay so yeah cool okay. yeah you know and, I can do and this all the day. other thing that but, you can the other thing yeah. that you can do is leave a dog leash leave a dog yeah. leash near the door if you feel like this, this is a, you know, you're a dog-friendly neighborhood or if you have a dog park in your subdivision, that's one of the okay. things that a lot of people are looking for is a dog-friendly, leave a leash by the door. Don't have a dog there, but, you know, yeah. take your take your dog away for every showing. But, you know, and, and hopefully the realtor will say, you know, dog park in the subdivision or uh, one thing, too, when you're doing your listing if they live in, say, a subdivision <clears throat> that has a, a bark park or, you know, a tot lot for kids, you want to make sure 
that on the listing paperwork that it says um, taught lot, also if it's a, a school of renown, you know, located in a uh, AAA school district, blah, blah, blah. Those are things you yeah, got all the to amenities do. Because that. Yeah, because that's what moms and dads are looking for. They want yeah. baseball fields that they can walk to so that the kids can they, they don't have to drive them to their baseball practices. The kids can ride their bikes. I love, I'm, I'm a creature of convenience. And as a yes. mother, those types of things, um, as much as I love to be kind of out and away, like I don't, right. like I need my space too, but, but to, to be located and where my kids can freely go outside and ride their bicycles and, um, get to the park like we can walk there or whatever but i i love mm -hmm. that and making sure people know what's around nearby that are that is great for the kids and to keep, keep them active and off of those screens yeah yes but one thing that i always try and you have to tell a story about a house when you're listing your house and mm -hmm. the way that you tell the story is the way you stage it you, you mm -hmm. stage it super clean you stage it telling who's going to live here. You stage it by telling the things that they can't see on their own. In the listing, you say in words. So you're telling a story in words about the house that they can't see in the photograph. That's the one thing that you have to remember as a good realtor. Those are the things that will bring more people in, especially if you're selling a difficult house or, you know, you've got to realize who the buyer is but the one thing that's universal is it's got to be clean and it's got to be organized and it's got to you know look meticulously maintained yes and clean immaculate as, as yes for sure organized. And, and most people can do that yeah organized oh. that's where you well. just made the difference for us Thank you. And it did, like, I, I, I'd I, have to go through my camera to see, like, pictures. I don't remember if we really got before and after too much. I can't remember. I know. I, I know between remember. both of us we were taking pictures. Yeah. If I could find I, them, if I could, could I share them? Of course. You're welcome to. Okay. Um, oh, we're not to put you on the spot. Sorry. Maybe I should ask that <laughs> off recording. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. But, but just like the difference and, and seeing what someone's going to walk into, even though you would have done your best. Yes, exactly. And I, and you arranged it like it was a little storefront boutique. And even I had to bring in all my friends because I was like, you have to see what this girl has done. It is just amazing. And we were all like, one of my friends said, I just want to have lunch in your closet. <laughs> Or at least cocktails. I was like, you're right. It's like a store. <laughs> I would see before and after I work with them. I think the difference was the fine tuning and things that I didn't realize that I needed, especially when we went into our closets um, and that the sweaters needed to look immaculately. And you had. You, I had a double row of sweaters, and you said, no, there needs to be space. There just needs to be a single row of sweaters, and they need to be folded all the same way. It's those details that matter. Mm. And it looks so pretty and nice and well taken care of. It does make a difference. It's, it's activating those senses, and it's giving them – what is it giving them? You tell me. Well, it's just giving them a sense of they have control in that in that space and that there's extra room and that they can visualize themselves putting their own clothes in there. Yeah, and, and if at the very least they're going to walk out with some ideas. Yeah, which is good. Never be afraid to share any ideas. Give everything away. And that's one thing I guess I've learned over time. I used to try and be so secretive of everything that I do, but what I've learned is the more I give away, the better it is for everybody. Mm, it comes back to you. Yeah. But we all but we all benefit when we try and help each other. 
and don't expect anything in return, but just give away as much as you can. So um, is there anything else? I know we could go different directions, like with what the market's doing right now and the interest rates and buying and stuff. We could go so many different directions with this. I'll be respectful of your time, and I appreciate you so, so much coming on and and speaking. Of course. I'm happy. This has been fun. So if someone, do you only work with people in Texas? Uh, I I actually can work with anybody throughout the United States. Um, I do, but I, as of now, we live in Houston, in the Houston area. Um, I can travel all over, but primarily I'm working in the Houston area right now. I love that you can travel wherever to work with people. <laughs> you know, because my clients move, and then they'll call me and they'll say, we're buying a house up here, but we want you to come up. And so I'll go up. I can only go as far as I I uh, charge a day fee, a day rate on that. But I just go up and help them because I'm not licensed in every state. I'm only, I was, I'm only licensed in three states right now. But um, – Anyway, I can I can help anybody, but just on a daily basis, just to give them ideas and thoughts. For the states that you do not have a license in, you don't actually become their realtor. No, I I no, I can only be a consultant. Yeah, no, they have to write. I've I've had license in multiple states before, but right now, my only license is in Texas, um, and so I I can only consult in the other states. So if someone in Texas wants to work with you, how do they find you? It's easy. Um, You can go to my telephone number is 832-689-6041. And you can look up, you can Google Cindy Whiteside and you can see who I'm a realtor. It it pops up my name. I'm right there up there at the top. And uh, contact me through that. So, um, yeah, and Cindy, obviously she knows what she's talking about. And and, <laughs> and when we worked together, like, I I knew instantly, I'm like, this woman knows her stuff. I was so in sync with everything that was happening and, and what you were saying. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, someone that speaks my language. Um, <laughs> so, and, and I I knew, and I've, I have talked with other realtors and I have worked with other realtors. But Cindy, right. you, you you understood what someone wants, what they need to do, yeah. And um and I knew you knew it at a at a level that that I don't see with every realtor. Like they may know it, but it's almost like there's like this energy missing of like um I don't know. There's there was the I don't know how to describe it. I'm just gonna say we were Aww. we were on the same. Golly. You know, like we were on the same wavelength, and um, yeah, we were simpatico for sure because we knew that we had a mission, we knew what we needed to do. But man, you were good, Melody. I, I, you know, I've dealt with a lot of people who are in your business, but no one was as good as you are. You were an amazing, girl. Anybody who works with you is very lucky. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. I I love it. I love doing it, and for the people that will actually allow me to kind of free flow and, like, you know, let's do it together, of course. But um, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. We were we were definitely a good team, all three of us, David, me, and you. <laughs> he he was amazing, too. He was so – y'all, you guys together so, were – well, and y'all were so funny together. And so <laughs> – well, we have fun. David and I have been together for more than 43 years, and we just, and I don't know, we just have a fun time wherever we go. I feel so lucky that he's my husband, and every day I just am grateful that I get to wake up next to him. And when you need to be serious and and empathetic and, and still, <laughs> and and that's a testament to, you know, your relationship and, and you know, retirement. Congratulations. Yes. Hello. And you have lots of um, life left to live and people to help. And so if anyone wants to reach out to Cindy, Cindy Whiteside, and she is in Houston, Texas, as she knows her stuff. And, hey, even if it's just a consultation, she'll definitely point you in the right direction. And today we hope 
got some feedback um, and some ideas and get to understand the, the market better from the seller position and the people that come in to help you make it happen, you know, like myself or like Cindy. Yeah, and that you take away and are inspired to, like, go right now into whatever room needs to be looking like a children's room. Or, like, okay, Cindy, I'm going to let you go. And All right. Thank you so much. I enjoyed cool. talking to you. Yes. All right. Uh, we'll be in touch again.